Why hello everybody, Spencer here, also known as Lego Dude 11 and in today's video, today's a brand new review for you on the channel, and today I'm going to be reviewing Doom Patrol Season 3 for you guys today. I did talk about Season 1 and 2 on my podcast, if you want to check that out, be sure to click this card up here, but I'm going to be discussing three Season 3, all 9 episodes, or all 10 episodes, I forgot how many there were, all 10 episodes of Doom Patrol Season 3 right now, so without further ado, let's discuss. Alright, so with that being said, I do have a list of notes here, like I do always typically for my reviews, but this is going to be a spoiler review. If you have not seen the show, I'm going to be talking about things that were in the season. Now, like I did with Eternals, that's spoiler. Like, with this, if you haven't seen the show, uh, right off the bat, I'll give, give you preempt information here. This is a mature show. It's on H it's an HBO Max original. It's a little bit more mature, uh, but it's still uh, it's one of my favorite DC shows. It's my favorite DC show probably ever. Um, now there's some CW shows I like. I mean I like The Flash, but I I've ended the Flash train. Um, I just couldn't continue the Flash even though I have my shirt on. I even have Flash socks on as well. If you want to see them, there's the Flash logo. But uh, so yeah, I'm very DC today, but <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about Doom Patrol here. This is a mature show. If you've not seen it, ask your parents. But if you have seen it, I love this show. Um, I think I've actually gotten a couple comments before that a couple of you have seen it that I've that I've talked about when I've talked about it before. But the first note I have is the theme song slash the credits theme. So I always talk about the the soundtrack and the scores for the movies and the TV shows I t I review. But this one, however, the, the the like the score. I don't intensely I don't intently listen to the soundtrack in this show, not because it's bad and not because it's not well done in any way, but just because like there are certain segments in the show that I'm watching for storylines and and character moments and all that fun stuff that I'll talk about later in this video review. But ju the the main core thing that I that I find really well done is the just the main theme song at the beginning of the, the 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 episode of the show and at the end those are my favorite parts of not of the not of the show of the soundtrack but sometimes there will be like a like a little like music theme or uh, music tempo whatever is happening in uh, rhythm that will be happening and I really dig it but it like throughout the whole the whole episode doesn't have like a big epic score that is so groundbreaking but um, other than that, I do love the ending remix theme, so I really love and dig what they do with that creation. So beyond that, that's all I have to mention on the, on the, the soundtrack and theme song. So moving along, um, the Season 2 resolution. Now, this is something I wrote down. If you don't know what I mean, if you have not checked out any of the show, check it out if you can. If you can't because it's mature, no, no uh, fault to you. I understand why. But... If you don't know what I mean by season two resolution, if you haven't seen last season or this season, it makes not might not make sense. But if you have seen it entirely, then what I mean by that is last season kind of ended on a big cliffhanger. Not just a cliffhanger, but a big. It didn't get resolved. Season two didn't get resolved, and in a way that it COVID hit. So they had they had nine episodes last time, and it kind it. it it was squished. It was very squished and condensed. And one of my things, I like this season last more than last one, or more than last time, just because it had more of a fleshed out arc to it. Last time, there was an arc to it, but it felt very rushed due to the sense that then COVID was coming up, they had to rush and, and, and finish filming. And then the ending just felt like they were, they ended it because they had nothing else to do. They had, they couldn't they couldn't stop filming. They they had to stop filming, and that was their ending. So episode two or episode season three episode one fit, concluded season two in a way. And what did I think on that? I thought it was very well done in terms of storyline. But I wish after I finished watching it or as I was watching it, and I was like, I wish it was done a little tad differently. Because it felt so, I, I wished, 
Like, I understand that they were trying to resolve season two within the first episode, and it was fine, but I wish it was done a little longer. And and if you don't, if you haven't seen it, because of the way it ended last season, and 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 like the the villain from last season, season two, just was there, and d the candle maker was there, and 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 didn't like. It was like instantaneous, like how they wrapped up the villain fight or the villain plot seemed very rushed, and it was like, all right, that's it. We got to go into season three now. It it just didn't really. It worked in a story standpoint, if if you guys know what I mean. But overall, I felt like it should have been just developed. And and with that said, I f I feel like I didn't like it as much. Like, it got resolved, but then that's why I don't like season two that much. It was great. I think this show's still bonkers. And with that in mind, <laughs> that's the season two resolution. Let's continue with, with uh, speaking of bonkers, let's just go into it. So the first plot line was about their, I actually forget what the first episode was called, Possibilities Control, Possibilities Patrol. And they're basically dealing with the ending of season two, moving along, and just dealing with themselves and all all the stuff that happens so I'm not gonna really discuss the first episode per se it's just really you know the first plot line is them so basically what episode one is about is they can they the Doom Patrol confronts their troubling complications from being free to their wax so basically after the, the candle maker's gone and then Niles, the chief, is being persecuted from a mysterious woman from the past. So also, there's also the, um, there's two aliens in the beginning, which are kind of meaningful, but kind of pointless in a way. Like, I like it, but it, it's just, it works. I'll say it works. I think they're neat. They're new characters, which is something I put down. New characters, new villains, a new threat that they sort of take down, but they really don't. Um, and then... Throughout the first episode, you know, these, these characters, these new villains, these new threats arise, and then it moves into the next episode, kind of continues on. I mean, the whole season continues, but then it kind of just transitions next episode, and it's called Vacay, Control, Vacay Patrol. And the Doom Patrol goes on vacation, and this is kind of like the same plot. They go on vacation to this resort where they find these two aliens, then end up, they get killed, and which transitions to the next episode where they end up in... in the the afterlife and then larry negative man which is one of my favorite characters of the show as well as robot man um larry has to go save the characters in the afterlife part of the do some of the doom patrol in the afterlife which is a very which is a really interesting episode and then after being coming out of the afterlife the next episode has them dealing with being zombies since they get all this goop on them they become in, they turn into zombies, which is really bonkers in and of itself. I love this episode when they're just yelling out brains. It's really creepy, it's really hilarious, and it's just complete flat out bonkers as the whole sit show is. So those four episodes kind of are like one whole arc in a way. And then after that, I mean the whole season's an arc. But in a way, the first two episodes kind of parallel kinda of are uh, one thing. And then going, transitioning to there, the next two are kind of like all four in a group there. And then, as we move on from those ones, those are really just completely bonkers. Um, that has a whole storyline in and of itself. But yeah, the dead ghosts and zombies are just crazy t twists and really unique storyline. Um, so I mentioned the new characters. I mentioned... The villains. So we have these two aliens that kill our Doom Patrol, right? Gargoax, the Destroyer, or the Destruction, I think is what, what the name is. The Destroyer. Gargoax, the Destroyer. And then his sidekick that get killed. They both die, but they also kill the Doom Patrol at the same time. So both characters get killed off. But then, you know, the Doom Patrol lives again because they're out of the afterlife. They turn into zombies. Crazy, crazy storyline. Um, so yeah, those are some new characters. Also, one of the big villains in this season is one of my fate like I was really intrigued to see them use in this season was uh, Monastir Mala and the Brain 
and there are two characters, there are two team up characters, not team up, uh, what's that word? Partner characters, partner villains. And I actually knew about them from the LEGO DC Super Villains game that I've played, and it's really unique. They're really unique characters. They're they're from the corporation, the Brotherhood of Evil. That was actually in the first season of Doom Patrol, and now this season there's another uh, organization called the Sisterhood of Dada, which is actually the fifth episode named Dada Patrol. And this new group of villains is really unique, and da the Sisterhood of Dada is this really weird. Uh, by, by the way, I didn't mention, give a premise as to what Doom Patrol is. It's basically like a group, the Doom Patrol is a group of misfit, like superhero team-up uh, DC characters. They don't know that they're heroes yet, but they try to save the day from evil threats in the DC universe, and they're really bizarre characters and things that happen, like they turn into zombies at some points. Um, but yeah, the Sisterhood of Dada is... um. This really unique, strange, villainous, like, mysterious, overarching, like, it's like an anarchy almost. And it's just weird. They have these weird mantras, they have these weird dances, and just flat out bizarre rituals, in a way. And uh, it, you, you see flashbacks and stuff. One of the things that happened in this season, speaking of flashbacks, was time travel. And I, one of the things I love about this season was the time travel elements, because I always like seeing time travel in shows and movies and all that fun stuff. But, you know, there doesn't have to be time travel in every single pop culture thing, but apparently they wanted to add it in this. And it was really unique and well done how they decided to use it. And the character Alaska Woman, Rita Farr, actually is the one that time travels to 1917 is one of the episodes 1917 patrol and then she teams up with the sisterhood of dada kind of becomes evil doesn't know she's evil but thinks she's she still retains her memories and all this but one of my favorite things about the time travel element is that uh the villain one of the villains laura demille also called madame rouge who's kind of, who's like a shapeshifter and stuff she turns into an evil baby well i'll get to that later she um the m crazy jane Jane mentions, does a, says a reference like Doctor Who, which is really cool, which is a really cool reference in and of itself because the character, Madame Rouge, Laura DeMille, is played by, by the actress Missy from Doctor Who, which is really, I, I like her, she play, um, Missy was also the master, a version of the master, which is a, just a great character in Doctor Who, and so just to have that reference, Doctor Who, from her being in that show, not only is she British, not only does they do they time travel in, Do in Doom Patrol, but she was in Doctor Who, which is just a clever reference in the, whole, in the whole thing. So I love that. So, yeah, going on that, from the villains and all the time travel and Madame Rouge, she, in one of the episodes, in I think it was like the third to last episode, I believe, I think it was, let me see, Bird Patrol. It might have been. It, it was Subconscious Patrol, actually, if I can read it right. Um, do, 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 matter of most I think it was that one. I believe it was Subconscious Patrol. Was episode eight, and it dealt with or uh, Madam. You see, Madam Rouge come over to the Doom Mansion, Doom Patrol Mansion, to, to try to take over, and she turns into Cliff Steele's baby. By the way. Uh, yeah, Cliff Steele's baby, and then you see her face, like, and they're just fighting her, and it was like a killer baby moment. It was my, the, like, one laugh out loud, loud moment that I just go, in my seat, laughing hysterically, you know, bonkers, craziness, hysterical stuff, so, you know, things like that in this show that are really, really funny, and other things that just make you go, like, what, and just sit in your seat and just laughing your butt off, but... Other than that, that's whole, like that was one of the funniest moments of the, of this season. Um, so I'm gonna I I'm not gonna mention the entire show as a whole or like like break down sequence by sequence, but I do want to mention a few things here: the the effects, arcs, and references. I did mention references like Doctor Who, but I think that was the only one that I had on my mind that was really really funny and that was really a, such a great reference. 
correct, correct. But I think um I don't know what other references there are other references in this show, maybe to pop culture, maybe to things that they tie into like other seasons or something. But just things overall. I love this I love the the plots, like the zombies, the ghosts, the dead, the the afterlife and all this. But the effects are super well done. Like like the stretching abilities, the fog from the, the fog lady. There were some puppet moments which are really well done. There are just the, the time travel the time travel machine. All this stuff that they have in this show is I think really well done. It's just one of my favorite things to see on television. Um, also the negative man exp um, effects and and all this stuff. I'm not saying other effects aren't well done, but sometimes when I watch The Flash, I just go, man, these are really bad. But I think they do a really good and well done job at their effects when it comes, and the budget when it comes to this show. Um, I also love the story arcs to some of the characters, like Robot Man has a really fleshed out arc, Negative Man, even even Rita Farr, Elastor Woman, Cyborg, uh, what's Crazy Jane has a really interesting and, and heartwarming, not heartwarming, like satisfying arc, like, I don't know if satisfying is the right word, but like critical arc, Crazy Jane does, and I'm really excited to see where this next season goes with her and all these other characters. Cyborg, it left me really underwhelmed. Um, even, even I'll mention these two characters, Robot Man, Cliff Steele, going into the next season, I'm really curious to see where his character goes. If he's going to be put back into his regular body because he's now a giant robot, not the other one, because Monastir Mala put the brain, the, the the brain was now switched around. But I'm really curious to see if he is going to go back to his regular body, Robot Man. But Cyborg really left me underwhelmed. Um, the finale was hilarious. I love some of the things that happened, like when. You know, the giant robots just running through the streets, and it's like, I cannot stop! I can't stop! And all that was just hilarious, and there were other things, like, that got resolved. I was like, yay! I was, like, excited about that. I was really... I loved everything that happened in the finale. But yeah, I'm just Cyborg. Cyborg left me really underwhelmed, because he's my least favorite member in the Doom Patrol... in this show. Not... He has a really great arc throughout the show, but... He, he, his character has been fleshed out ever since the start of the show and f forward, right? But now, uh, he's, he, he's not a member of Doom Patrol to begin with. And now, his character has synthetic skin on him, so he has none of the cyborg powers. He's not, he, he, he's not like a superhero anymore. So is he going to get that back? Is he not? Like, what's going to happen? Now, I know he could be resolved in some way next season, but 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 what happened? What happened? He, in comics, he's in the Justice League and the Teen Titans, and he's used in, in those two groups. He, he I, I, don't, I haven't seen him in Doom Patrol at all, except this show. Why they chose him, I don't know. I've never really like been a fan of this character in the show. He's always been in Justice League and Teen Titans, so I don't know what they were thinking. I hope they get new characters next season. That's what I'm excited for in season four. If they'll get new members, I hope he gets his powers back at some point because I'm really underwhelmed with the character Cyborg. It's just it's never been my favorite. I love Robot Man, Negative Man are my two favorites. Then um, I like Crazy Jane a lot. I just never heard of her, but she's really good. And then all her personas. Um, what's his face? Uh, Rita Farr is great as well. But I really wish Ambush Bug was in it, because in the comics there's a character called Ambush Bug, and he would be amazing. I couldn't. I would really like to see Ambush Bug in live action form in this show. And you know, if he was in the show, I would love to see it. I can't. I would be so down to see him in the show. I would really love to see other unique, crazy heroes join the cast. And I, I'm excited for new villains to arise in next season. But you know, those are my thoughts and everything that was on my mind about this season. Just wanted to throw them out to you. Guys, you know, that was my Doom Patrol Season 3 review and thoughts, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like to break down shows. I don't like to spoil things for you. You know, there were some spoilers I talked about. Um, things that actually, like, heavy things in the show. But I, those are just things that are on my mind I want to talk about, about this 
about one of my favorite sh DC shows and favorite shows in general. This is actually my top 10 shows I watched, actually. It's really good. And uh, it is mature, but hey, if you want to check it out, check it out. And I'll, I'll talk about this show any day with any of my friends or anybody that wants to talk about it. So with that being said, those are every that was everything on my mind from Doom Patrol Season 3. The finale, where I think it will go... I just want to see that. I just mentioned, like, those are the things I want to see down the line. So, I don't know. Those are, that's everything I want to talk about today. Um, if you did enjoy this review, don't forget to hit that like button. Just don't forget to leave a like down below if you did enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Lego Dude 11. Be part of the family. You can share these videos with your family and friends. Leave a comment down below what you uh, thought about it. Anything that you liked, disliked, or just cared to comment on. As always, don't forget to leave uh, some, follow me down uh Boba Fett Jedi Master link is down below on Instagram. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews coming in the future. More movie reviews. Ghostbusters Afterlife is next. And then Spider-Man No Way Home. So excited for that. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow me. And as always, don't forget to keep calm. Play Lego. See you guys in the next review. Peace out. Bye, everyone.